I want to start this morning with a story. Um, I had a house on the market just recently, and I knew that it was going to be on the market for about six months. And I was talking to a lady about it who said they might want it. And during the conversation, I said to her, well, what about your current house? And she goes, oh, we know all kinds of realtors, just all kinds of realtors. And we got a friend in the business. And so when it went ahead, I showed her the house six months later when it came on the market and it didn't meet their needs. But I got a call from her this week and what she told me was, well, Sandy, we listed with our friend, but we are really not happy with how things are going. What can we do? And she's locked into a six month contract with that person at this time. And it brought to mind for me how to recognize a great realtor. Uh, to choose a friend is not a bad thing. To have rapport is a good thing, but it's just not enough. It doesn't begin to address the issues that are really important in the process. And for most people, their home is their biggest investment. So what I want to do today is just go real quickly through some of the things that are important in your working relationship with your realtor. Um, Choosing a realtor is a lot like choosing a house. There's a foundation, there's some just basic duties that are going to happen in the process. They, the quality may vary, but there's some basic duties. There's the roof, there's the protection, which is what a buyer or a seller need in the process to just take care of their interests, to take care of their money as they go along the trail. Quality of performance can vary depending on the realtor's skill and expertise. And the amenities, I'm calling call that just going the extra mile in the process. The foundation on the basic duties, and I put a handout up there for you guys. Um, this is a standard form that, as a Carl Lake realtor, we sign with everybody. And what it does is it makes an effort to bring to the table a discussion point. Uh, there are duties to all parties, duties to apply and then call like agency policy. And some of these things people just take for granted. They just say, oh, our agent won't do that. But they're real important things. I'll zip down through here. Duties to all parties to diligently exercise real reasonable skill and care. In other words, we're supposed to know our job and do it. To disclose to each party to the transaction any adverse facts that a licensee may know about. And that's something that the general public doesn't realize that every agent involved has to keep their eyes open to find anything wrong with the property they can and tell everybody about it, which is uh, kind of a surprise. The, uh, the next thing is to maintain confidentiality. As your realtor, I end up knowing all kinds of stuff about you. And, and I want my clients to be able to talk to me openly to share goals, to share strengths and weaknesses in the process. And it is true that my job is to maintain confidentiality. Like a client may say to me, hey, look, we gotta get this house sold because my husband has moved. I want to be in Nebraska by August the 5th. If I go and share that with the general public, that weakens that, that seller's negotiating position. And that's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do everything I can to strengthen your negotiating position and make it as much money on your time schedule as possible. Um, I'm supposed to provide services with honesty and good faith, timely and accurate information about market conditions. A lot of times I'll go out to a listing and, and the um, sellers will say, we know what our house is worth because we know what the neighbors sold for. And half the time that number is not even an accurate number. Plus, they don't know what the neighbors have done to the property. So their agent's job is to really bring reality to that moment. And I usually tell people there's three prices. One is what you were thinking before I got here, what we're talking about right now, and what we're really going to take a look at our strategy and decide is going to be our price point to move forward. Agents are not supposed to get engage in self-dealing. We're supposed uh, or act on behalf of anybody that we have interest in, we're supposed to put the client's interest first. There are also duties very specific to each client, and those are to obey all lawful instructions. In other words, I work for my clients. If the client says, Sandy, you get that offer over there tonight, and it's 10 o'clock, I have to hustle and get it done, whether it's by email, fax, or whatever. If they say, uh-oh, wait, we need to sleep on this. My, I have to listen up and I have to be basically obedient to what, what my bosses are telling me to do. Um, this is the most important one. A good agent 
is loyal to the interest of the client and puts the interest of the clients above everybody else in the whole transaction. And that is where sometimes we hear maybe the agent would go on vacation and they wanted the, somebody to close sooner or not. Just other things that might interfere with that. But that's the most important thing that an agent does is to make, bring their services to the transaction and to assist the buyer or the seller in every way that they can to enhance the situation. And there's some things on here that are just standard uh, things that you think about, scheduling showings, receiving offers, answering questions. Those are standard things um, that are just the foundation of every real estate transaction. I've got that form up here. I've got you guys a copy of it if you would like to look at it. Protections. This is just extremely important. The contracts themselves mm -hmm. offer a lot of protection going through the process. There are forms, procedures, and options that are built in to the, the whole process. Um, let me see. One of them would be the appraisal contingency. When a buyer purchases a property, there's a clause in the contract that can either be checked or not checked that says, I don't want to pay any more for this house and it actually appraises at the mortgage company. And what happens is if it appraises for more, that's great, that's great, but if it appraises for less, then the buyer has the option to say, no, I don't want the property or I want to renegotiate, and they get thrown us money back. Another protection is if, uh, if there's a problem with the title. These are standard things that people think about. Uh, another one may be the option to step away from the contract. If in the middle of the process, the buyer or the seller have a job loss. In other words, they're no longer able to really perform. Then they can get their earnest money back and move forward. A home inspection is uh, another protection. It enables the buyers to have an introduction to the property. And if mechanical or structural conditions are found in the home through that inspection that are just not acceptable to the buyer, the buyer usually they find little peddling stuff or something that Maybe it's a thousand dollars, but if there's a catastrophic thing there, I had a home inspector one time go under a house and he came back out and he said, "Run, just run! <laughs> do, not, do not even pause. Get away from this property." Um, the the wording in the contract is that if the property is not acceptable, then the buyer may get their own money back. And it, it's not talking about cosmetic things, because those are readily available, but if the inspection shows up some things that are just not acceptable, that buyer says, I can't handle this, or I don't want to work with this, then they can get artist money back and go find the house that is more important than you. Uh, another one that a lot of people don't think about is there's protection while the house is under contract. Um, it's a vulnerable time. The house is, it's not, it doesn't belong to the new owner, but it's moving forward from the old owner. And if there is damage, and the standard percentage is if there's a ten, more than 10% damage to the property, then we're back to the negotiating table. Like we had a house one time that burned while it was under contract, I mean all the way to a slab. And lots during the ice storm, I don't know if I remember the ice storm, lots of trees and houses that were under contract. And what happens at that point is if the house is, the damage is less than 10% of the property value, the seller has to make it whole. They have to make it good. But if it's more than 10%, Again, we're we'll back to the negotiating table because, uh, well, like the house that burned, those buyers could wait. They said, this is great, you know. Build a house back, let us choose the colors, the carpet, be involved when we're in the construction, and we're going to get a house that we like even better than this one. But most people don't, they just don't have that option to stick around and wait for a lengthy process. But uh, the buyers are protected during the, uh, during the contract stage. Okay, this is an inside look at a shotgun inside look at what realtors have found out that our buyers and sellers want. And it's a um, pretty long list, but there are things on here that we don't think about most of the time. But imagine yourselves for just a minute, you're selling your house you got on the market or you're buying, and let me just run through these and think about how you would feel if you got all these things from your agent. Reliability, great communicator, keep client informed listener, proactive, problem solver mindset, great negotiating skills, honesty, integrity, credibility, tenacity, politeness, a hustler, 
heart for client, client centered, interest in working knowledge, interest and in working, interest in and working knowledge of houses and architecture, um, and more. And so, if anybody wants this list, what I encourage you to do is, if you have some realtors that you know, take a look at this list and sit down and interview them, and find out more about all of these things: return calls. Uh, response to clients, time frame, explains options and consequences. There's a lot here, um, and I'd be, again be glad to uh, provide this to you. This is just a brief resume, so you all know just a little bit more about me. I've been, I haven't been in here quite a year, and I've had some great one-on-ones, but there's a lot. I just want to share a little bit more. Um, my education, I have a degree in um, biology and chemistry. My work background, I was a systems inspector for TDA, water heater program, energy advisor, like gas and water, Sales Engineer, Energy Design Corporation, uh, Marketing Director, Red South Geo Corp. Um, and I've been a realtor since 1986. My mission statement is to provide exceptional quality that is client-based, common sense, uh, um, offers common sense real estate services, which give hope and means to those desiring either on their own home or to refine or enhance their life by way of life. And I mean that with all my heart. Um, here are just some testimonials. I have a long list and uh, <clears throat> narrowed it down to some things that I think are real important. I left nothing for the buyer to be concerned about. I took care of the details, stayed in close touch, uh, hired a great photographer that sold the house, five bids, and we, we beat out the competition. Um, I love my job, I love what I do, and I want to share with you guys that some of the things I think I bring to the table are just long, I've been a long-term resident. I do have a lot deeper knowledge of residential construction than a lot of realtors do. I have a proven sales record and a commitment to customer service and a history of customer satisfaction. Um, and the slide that did not show up, Crawlack, in 2005, Crawlack started doing uh, a marketing uh, outreach to buyers and sellers to get feedback, customer satisfaction. And I don't know why that's like a show, but anyway, uh, my customer satisfaction rating is 98.8, and that's for a since, since 2004. And I'm I'm proud of that, and I'm happy to share that with you guys. Thanks.